going to be a uh, build video on Tamiya's Freightliner Cascadia. So I'm going to do a multi-part video on building the truck, pretty much stock. I may add a few options. I'm going to use Tamiya's awesome multi-function sound system, MF01, MFC01. I've got a 45-turn motor here. We're going to paint it with Tamiya's TS51 Racing Blue. Beautiful truck. I'm going to try to give you all the ins and outs. May add a few options, I don't know. So uh, we'll get started. This is a build video, not an unboxing video, but I just wanted to show you what a great job Tamiya does on packing their kits. This thing is beautiful. The parts are well protected. Um, as always, I know their instructions are going to be perfect. Uh, really fun to build these. Got the instructions here. I pulled out most of the parts for the first step. One of the things that uh, Tamiya has done differently on the Cascadia as a newer kit is everything step A is packaged in one bag, at least as far as the hardware parts, and then we go on to step B. In the older kits, like the King Hauler, the A bag would maybe have one size of screw and you would save them and use them through the whole kit. So I've got a lot of muffin tins that are labeled. We're going to open this up. And inside there's a bunch of smaller bags, which are handy to keep separate. So these muffin tins do a great job of keeping all these little parts separate, even though they're not specifically labeled. I can at least separate out particular sizes of screws. So we'll dump all the parts in here. It makes it much easier for me to figure out where things are. They don't go rolling over on the floor or my bench. And I mean, if you've watched my videos, you know I like these dollar store muffin tins. I mean, they're a buck. And several of these really help, especially when you're building multiple models. So I'm going to get started. I've got uh, some Spectrum servos. You need the servos right from the start. These are uh, digital servos, about 75 ounces. Plenty for this model. I've got uh, the frame rails. One thing you want to make sure you do is peel off this protective covering because if you forget and put a bunch of screws in it, you can't get it off. So we'll get those ready to go. I'm going to sort out some more parts here and then we'll come back and start building. Like I said, um, first step is the servos, so you really need to have those on hand when you start the kit. Uh, these are JR servos. To me, it gives you uh, servo adapters for several brands. We'll just test fit these in the JR, and yes, they fit. So we need to cut these out. And there's a couple other parts that we'll cut out here. The, uh, the screw, since you're using their adapter, needs to be longer than the screw that came out of the servo, which is a short little thing. One thing I really like about Tamiya's instructions are that they give you a full-size drawing of the part. So if you have any question, you can just hold the screw over there to make sure it's the right length and the right one. That's the one we need right there. That's the screw. So I'm going to clip these out, get some parts assembled, and then show you what it looks like. I've installed the little ball link in there because when this is set up, it's about like that position. Very hard to get in there and put the nut on. Um, we've got these little center pieces that fit in the servo, but there's two different heights. For the steering servo, we use the shorter one. Our little servo saver device just clips over that. Arm clips over that. It fits on the servo. Now, we want to center the servo. You can hook it to your radio to do that. I have a little centering device here that center it up. 
mount that on there, put the washer in, grab our longer screw, and there we go. That all set up, put the other servo together and I'll be back. So our cross members basically hold the whole frame together and really only a couple things you need to watch out for. First off, you can see this is stamped with an L, so this is our left hand chassis member and then we have a right hand obviously. The slot up here is the end where the servos go. So this mounts in here like that. Put one screw in there. This end is slotted because if you have different size servos, it gives you some wiggle room. So because of that, We add a washer. Now we start putting in our cross members. And the first cross member, they have a they have a little girder here. The girder on the cross members, all the cross members down here, the girder faces up. The first cross brace, the girder faces down. It's another one of those things if you do it wrong you wind up having to take a lot of stuff apart that you really don't want to do. And all the other cross members, the girder faces up. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in and put the other side on and then show you what we've got when I'm done with it. Okay, got our chassis put together. Looks great. Pretty easy, just a lot of screws to drive in. This rear assembly we can slide in and you want and you see why it's important to get these in the right direction because if, you, if one's upside down you've got to either take a side apart or take them, these out and slide them out in and out. They do not come in, in apart once the chassis is built. So this one we use a slightly longer screw 10 millimeters instead of 8 because this metal Stay mounts here. So those two screws are ten millimeters. So that's going to complete the rear end of our chassis. I'll go ahead and tighten those screws and mount one on the other side. We've got some uh, front parts to put together. A bumper holder. This part has a notch in it which faces up. Like that. And we use a drop a screw through here. Fits through that to make an assembly. Now here we do want to use some Loctite. those both in. I was looking at my chassis. 
shocking how nice it would have looked to paint it the body color. Maybe I'll do that on a future build. I've got a Scania R620 I'm going to build with five axles. So I may have to do that. Okay, so that part goes together like that. And then just drops in the chassis like this. And we use screws to hold that on and that will give us our completed chassis. So I'll put those screws in, make sure I get everything tightened up, and then we'll go on to the next part, which will be the suspension. You'll notice I only put one screw in to hold this front end, because these two also hold a spring hanger. We've got spring hanger in the front. back plastic spacer part and that just screws in here I'll put a few turns in there so I can line up everything on the next screw through all three pieces. Got it. Tighten that down. shock hanger mounts in these two holes right here and those are threaded so we're going to add a little thread lock to our bolt and mount this. Okay, I'm going to get that tightened up and we'll build some shocks and add the rear shock hanger and then work on some suspension parts. Alright, the rear spring hanger got a shoulder bolt that fits through here. Spacer. Another hanger, another spacer, and the body is threaded for this, so we're going to add a little thread lock right here. And get this put together, snug it up, and it should be should move once everything's tightened and looks like we did that right. Do the other side and we'll work on some shocks. Okay, the shocks, <laughs> there's a bunch of these. Just unscrew the cap here. Grease up the shaft. Throw an O-ring on it. Add a little more grease down in here. And that just pushes through. The bottom is, you got to be careful not to mix up the, the ball ends with the shock ends. These are actually um, on a parts tree, they're plastic. What I do is slide a screwdriver through here to hold it. 
gives me a real easy way to keep it from turning without wiping out my fingers as I screw the shaft in. And I'll screw this down until it bottoms out. Cap back on. And we're looking good there. Build a few more of those. We also have to do the linkages. This is the steering link. And it just threads on. Like that. We'll do the shift link the same way. To me it has a full size drawing in the instructions so you just need to screw those on until they match. And so we've got a little bit more to do. We'll make those the right length and we'll get some shocks put on. All the shocks are built. We'll put one on here. That little spacer in there. Screw goes through it. Add a little thread lock here. Okay, I've also got our linkages put together. I'm not going to install those right now. I'll put the other shock on, and basically that completes bag A. So we'll move on to bag B, which are the suspension components. All right, I'm going to do the front suspension. You can see the nice heavy metal axle. I just installed these two spring shackles. Actually, these are the shock shackles. Our springs line up a little hole here. A little metal plate goes on top. And then these U-bolts just drop through the assembly. Hold it all in place. This kit is a, a newer kit, has lock nuts for the shackles, so we don't need Loctite. So we're going to mount both of these, and then this will drop onto our, our chassis as an assembly. So I'm going to finish putting this together, and then we'll drop it on. All right, got our suspension put on here. I already installed the ball joints in this steering arm. The axle, you can see, slides in here, and then the steering pin grease on that, slides through the assembly to keep it all together. Like that. Then we use one of our little C-clips to hold it in. complete. I had also already put the ball ends on our 
steering link, adjusted it to the right length according to the drawing, and that just snaps on here. So now we have our knuckles and our steering all put together. Looks pretty good. I'll do the, uh, the rear suspension now. It's pretty similar, so I'll, I'll uh, do it briefly. Then we'll get our uh, rear differentials and axles put together, and the chassis will be complete. One thing I forgot to mention, my uh, servo link to the steering which we built earlier can also be snapped on. Alright, now we've got our, our servo hooked up there too. Last step before building the rear differentials and axles are to mount the springs. The only thing really to note is they're built just like the fronts. These two plastic bushings fit on either side with a shackle over and some shoulder bolts on, hold the pads on. They install with a bushing and this very long screw. One thing you want to note is that the nuts face in and it's easy to build them with one <laughs> in the other direction. I've done that many times. You just mount through this hole right here. Slide all the way through. Drop another bushing in. Again, make sure the nuts face in. And a two millimeter lock nut, three millimeter lock nut. Okay, that completes our suspension. I'm going to build the differentials, rear axle differentials, and then we'll get that put together. We're gonna have this thing, uh, a rolling chassis here pretty quick. Okay, got my rear differential axle assemblies all built. They operate beautifully, very smooth. And uh, I'm gonna install them. I did a separate build video on on the uh, rear axle differential. So go check that out. It's about 10 minutes long. Shows how, how I put the whole thing together and a special grease I used to slow down the action, which I will put a link in the description. But these are pretty straightforward. They just mount, this is upside down, they just mount here on these pads. And a uh, little hanger here mounts through here. little grease, or a little uh, grease, a little thread lock on there, not grease, thread lock. And these just bolt on this little pad. So you can see how that works and really Right now, all we're going to do is bolt this rear assembly on. Uh, I'll come back in a second after I've got these both mounted up and we'll uh, go on to the next step. I've got my axle assemblies mounted up on the springs. Notice the orientation of these hangers here. They face away from the center. Also, you want to notice the orientation of the differentials. They're opposite. The large differential bump is on the left on this one, on the right on this one. If you put them both on the same side, one set of wheels will turn forward and the other will turn backwards. And yes, I have done that. So right now we're going to install the F6 part. And it just fits like this in here and in here 
and uses a shoulder bolt. Like that. And then a longer shoulder bolt. Like that. So we're going to install two here and we're going to install um, two here. A couple of things. They use different nuts on these. I do not know why. So this one up here uses a lock nut. And I'll just slide one on there loosely. Sorry for my fat fingers. Like that. The center one uses one of these flat nuts. So it requires some Loctite. So that just bolts up like this. Now one thing you want to do, we're going to put another one here, another one here, another one here. Before you mount the back to, we want to get our drive shaft in there, because if we don't, we can't get it in. So we're going to put that one in, then we're going to install this rear one, and now the drive shaft will be captured. So, same as before, I'm going to get everything bolted up here, and we'll move on to the next. Alright, the final part of uh, the suspension, or the shocks, which we built earlier, you'll see the shock hanger has a little pin here, which lines up with that hole. So we just insert a bushing in the shock, a little, little Loctite on the bolt, slides in here and voila then we use the same shoulder bolt the short one lock nut and we do the same on all four corners that will finish up our suspension so we'll put this thing over and yeah, probably put some tires on it and then we'll uh, save everything else for part two okay assembling the tires and wheels are easy you can see the front wheel I pushed a couple bearings in it notice bearings, not bushings, you already know that. The tires just work on to the wheel very simply. And then you need to glue them on just a tiny bit of super glue. The super glue really isn't to hold the tire to the rim, to hold it on. It's just to keep on the drive wheels from the tire sliding around the rim. So I just used a tiny drop on each side. The other advantage to that is if you want to replace them with different tires at a point, you can get them off. Okay, so our front tire then just mounts on the axle. 
put one of the nuts on here. And that gets our front done. You can see that I already did the other side. You can also see why I like bearings. Now let's take a look at the rear wheels. They're two pieces. I already put the tires on them and glued them. So they just fit together. Like that. Then I take a little bit of Loctite put it in the center of the nut recess because these little tiny nuts are a booger and that helps to hold them in so I'll grab a little nut here get it down in the right spot Sometimes I make this look hard, and sometimes I just edit it out, but I'm not going to edit it out, I'm just going to leave that. Little Allen head screw, and then we'll just put that together, and I'll do the other three. See, I did edit out putting any other screws because it was such a pain. Lastly, we just drop one of these adapters on here. It fits over like that. We'll put our nut on. And there's our Cascadia ready to go. Rolls fine, which means we got the diffs on the correct direction. Everything is great. So now I'm going to end uh, part one. Uh, part two, I'm going to put in the transmission drive line, some of the accessories, probably a couple of the uh, sound system pieces. Part three, we'll finish up all the electronics. Part four, we'll probably do the painting. So. Come back soon. Here's a little teaser. One of the painted body panels. I've been painting on this all along and I will have those videos later. It's turning out really good. So I'm excited. Subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos and uh, share it. And uh, We'll see you back soon with part two of the Cascadia build. Thank you for watching.